Now that we're starting to get a feel of all the tools that are in Windows, I'm going to take this a bit deeper. A question that comes to me all the time is, well, Mike, how do I get to this tool or how do I get to that tool or which tool am I supposed to use for what or the other? Well, in this episode, what I want to do is kind of get zen-like about the different tool sets that are within Windows. Now, obviously, we've got lots more episodes that cover more tools, but in this particular one, I want to just talk about the where do you go to get to tools more than anything else? So the first thing I want to start off with is good old right click. Right click is your best buddy when it comes to Windows. With right click, I can do just about anything I want. So here I am in File Explorer. So if I want to, I can right click on, for example, this PC and I can select Properties and it's going to take me to something that has to do with the PC in general. In this particular one, we're talking about system from the control panel. It just tells us things like the version. We're going to see that again in other episodes. I can right click on a folder and select properties and it's going to give me properties about that particular folder. Trust me, we're going to go all kinds of folders things. I can right click just on the desktop and if I right click on the desktop, I get options that help me configure the desktop. In this case, the display if I want, or if I personalize it, that's going to let me do things like backgrounds and screen savers, that type of stuff. Even the Windows key can be right clicked on. So if I right click on this, you'll notice that I get a quick shortcut to all kinds of different tools. Even the taskbar down here. If I right click on this, I can go to my taskbar settings. The bottom line is, when in doubt, if you've got to mess with something, what I need you to do is right click on it and most times select properties. Right click is always going to be your buddy, so when in doubt, right click. Now I'm going to tell you right now, the exam is not going to test you on which buttons do you click to get to where. Not going to happen. There'll be a couple of hotkeys and we'll cover those for certain applications, but the bottom line is, don't panic about where did Mike go to get to task manager or how did Mike get to system properties. Make sure that you're understanding conceptually that your right click can often be your best buddy when in doubt. Okay, the second place I want you to look for stuff is in the old school control panel. One of the nice things I like about Windows is I can simply just type in something, and you can see control panel up at the top, and it gets me automatically to where I want to go. Your other place to look for anything is going to be in control panel. Now, while we're in here, I want to show you a couple things that drive me insane. This is what default control panels look like to most people. That's fine for normal people, but for weirdo users like us, I strongly recommend you go into either a large icon, a little too big for me, or a small icon view. I don't like that extra step in there. I want to see everything that's in the control panel from one particular shot. Now, if you've been watching other episodes, we've already been in here quite a bit. You just didn't know it. For example, here's Device Manager. Here's BitLocker. There's a lot of stuff we've already played with. So make sure if you're unsure where to go, try the control panel. You'll probably find what you need. Now, while we're in control panel, there is one particular control panel applet, as we say, that I want you to notice. And it's right up here on mine in the upper left-hand corner. By the way, your control panel could be different than mine, depending on what you install. A lot of utilities like anti-malware and things like that will put in their own little icons in here. So if there's a little difference between yours and mine, don't panic, it's okay. Anyway, back to administrative tools. So if you click on this, administrative tools really has a lot of important things that we're going to need to do. So I don't want to go into a lot of detail right now because we have episodes that cover lots of these, but there is one I want to touch on and it's right here. It's called System Configuration. System Configuration is a very handy tool for a lot of stuff that starts at the beginning of your system, when your system boots up. So for example, if I want to do a normal, just regular old normal startup, I could do that. I can do a diagnostic startup, which is just going to load some really basic stuff. And then we can do a selective startup, which you'll see it's already pre-set here. And it'll simply say, do I want to load just services? Do I want to load startup items? and then you always have to do original boot configuration. So what it's giving you is the option It says, look, you've got a bunch of services that are pre-configured to auto start. Do you want to load those or not? Secondly, you have a bunch of programs that are pre-configured to auto load. Do you want them to start or not? 
So this is where we would go to handle that. The next tab is your boot tab. There's not much to do in here. Generally what it's saying is what operating systems are currently in your boot partition and which one do you want to run. Now on 99% of computers these days there's only one operating system and there's my Windows 10. And I can do a few other extra settings here which we'll get into when we talk about fixing Windows. Here's services. Now here's the interesting thing about system configuration. Let's say you've got a problem with some particular service. You've just installed something and you know it installed a service because during the installation it said I'm installing service XYZ. And then you start having problems. One of the nice things about system configuration is I can go in and you can see where I uncheck stuff. So by unchecking something I will prevent that and only that service from starting up. So that can be a real convenience if you want to just reboot and say, okay, I've turned off Bluetooth, now what's happening? And I use this quite a bit myself. Next is startup. Now startup used to be under system configuration. It's now in task manager. We'll take a little sneak over there and you can see actually what programs are starting up and I can unload them at this point. I can disable them at this point. If something's starting up that's causing me trouble, I can take care of it here. And the last one is tools, which to be honest with you, I don't use very much. It's just yet another way to get to even more tools. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that be as it is. Microsoft is notorious for having 18 ways to get to any one given tool. I have seen technicians get in fist fights because the best way to get to some certain control panel applet is this way and another guy wants to do it another way. And I don't care, just pick one and you'll be all right. All right, the last one I want to touch on is settings. Settings has a lot of overlap with control panel. I'm pretty sure that the goal of Microsoft is one day to get rid of control panel and only use settings. What's interesting is that you'll find yourself in a lot of situations where you're in settings and then you get pushed to a control panel applet. So for example, here's some microphone input. If I click on this, it actually pushes me to a control panel applet. So you can see pretty clearly there's a big difference in the look and feel of a settings applet versus a control panel applet. The bottom line is if you're digging for something, you're going to have to pick your choices between a right click, control panel, or settings. However, Microsoft makes this so much easier today. All you have to do is go down into your search bar, type in the name of the tool that you're looking for, and it pops right up. And remember, the test is never going to test you on paths.